Let us consider a small wave propagating in a horizontal channel initially at rest. The wave height is delta d, the propagation speed is u. For an observer traveling with the wave, the continuity on the energy equation may be written between an upstream location on the cross section where the wave height is maximum. Neglecting energy loss and assuming a prismatic rectangular channel, the basic equation needs an expression of the celerity of the disturbance. For an infinitely small disturbance, the previous result yields the celerity c of a small wave in an open channel, first derived in 1781. Val x question, c equals square root of gd, valid for a rectangular horizontal channel. For an infinitely small disturbance propagating in a canal with an initial uniform velocity v, the the propagation speed of the disturbance is u equals v plus square root of gd, where u is a disturbance celerity for an observer standing on the bank and assuming a small wave propagating in the flow direction. The fraud number may be written in a form analogous to a saro mach number in compressible flow, as the ratio of the flow velocity to the celerity of small disturbance. When the fraud and mach number are less than unity, disturbances at a point can propagate in all parts of the flow. For fraud on saro mach number less or greater than unity, disturbance propagate only in the downstream direction. Thus, in supercritical flow, small disturbance propagate only with the flow direction. The study of two-dimensional supercritical flow in open channel is very similar to the study of supersonic gas flow. The analogy was applied with some success in the late 19th century and early 20th century for the propagation of oblique shock waves. Interestingly, the celerity C of a small disturbance in open channel flow is much lower than the sound celerity and can be more easily measured. This photograph illustrates some shock wave in a two-dimensional channel. Further downstream, an obstacle forces the flow to accelerate around the object, becoming supercritical, and shock wave develops downstream of the obstacle. The next photograph shows some shock wave in a supercritical flow, upstream of a non dual jump in a 0.7 meter wide channel, looking downstream. With the development of high-speed wind tunnel in the 1940s and 50s, some considerable flow experimental results were later applied back to open national flow situation. Nowadays, the analogy is seldom used because of limitations. The following photograph shows a supersonic wind tunnel in the then NACA Ames Aeronautical Laboratory, photograph taken in 1948. In compressible flow, the pressure and fluid density depend on the velocity magnitude relative to the celerity of sound. The compressibility effects are then expressed in terms of the Mach number. The propagation of pressure wave is comparable to the movement of small amplitude wave at the surface of an open channel, first discussed by Joseph Lagrade in 1781. The combination of motion equation for two-dimensional compressible flow with the state equation produces the same basic equation as for open channel flow, in which the gas density is identified with the flow depth. As a result, sorry, such a result is obtained however with some fairly strict assumption, an invisible flow, a hydrostatic pressure gradient, and the ratio of specific heat being equal to 2.